Welcome to the Conscious Creative from MuseWorks Audio. The Conscious Creative is a podcast featuring interviews with artists who are doing transformational work in their craft and in their communities. Join us as we discuss different artistic philosophies, give you brand new tools to bring back to your creative spaces, and build a community of artists dedicated to deepening their relationship with their craft. I'm your host, Mike Irish. Thank you for joining us. Welcome to yet another episode of The Conscious Creative. Today we have Treble NLS on the show. Treble is an artist, producer, designer, and activist from Pittsburgh. And today we spoke about his beginnings as an artist. We spoke about the role he plays in One Hood Media, which is a group that a previous guest, Brittany Chantel, is a part of. We also spoke about his 2018 album, Story of an American Reject, and the story behind it, and his clothing brand, Reject, as well. And finally, we spoke a little bit about his role as a mentor to youth and how he views that and how he undertakes that and what it means to him. Treble is a real force. Um, It was a real pleasure engaging with him and he really brought such beautiful energy to the interview. And I hope that you enjoy it as much as I enjoyed chatting with him. And thanks for tuning in. And without further ado, let's get into the episode with Treble and LS. Welcome, Treble NLS, to The Conscious Creative. I appreciate you taking the time, man. Um, we chopped it up a little bit before the interview, and I'm really just stoked about hearing your story and, and hearing about what you're up to and everything, man. Yeah, thanks for having me, man. I'm excited to be here, you know? Um, yeah, let's let's get straight into it. It's, it's, it's interesting to be here because, like, this is... I'm not used to being on camera in the daytime, you know, like because all winter our programs have run at like 6 p.m. And we all know at 6 p.m. It's lights out outside, you know, so it's like always dark in here on camera. But now yeah, it's yeah. like <laughs> they get to see the light. You know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So maybe just to give the audience like a bit of your backstory and what um, the NLS in your name means and and who is a part of NLS and what is it all mm. about? All right. So first things first, um, I have to lead with I am Trouble NLS. I'm from Pittsburgh, PA, um, born and raised here. Um, I am a producer at this point, but I, I rap. I play instruments, as you can see. Um, I make beats. I produce, of course. Um, And I'm just like a super creative thinker. I like to just create, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm all about just creating because I realize like, you know, source energy gives me the power to create. So whatever I want to create, I can do it as long as I have the means, you know? So um, NLS, NLS actually started in high school. It started as a movement between me, my homie Ron, and my homie Q, AKA Quinn, you know what I'm saying? And um, Ron is actually who came up with NLS because he was trying out for the basketball team at the high school he went to called Alderdice. If anyone knows Wiz Khalifa, they know about Taylor Alderdice. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, um, and he didn't make the team and he was kind of bummed out about it. But he was like, you know what, bro? It's time to be on next level shit. And that's that's what NLS originally meant. It's time to be on next level shit, you know? Time to get to that next level. And then it had a double meaning because we worked for a, a program called Center of Life. And we worked for the Crunk Movement under the Center of Life. And um, the Crunk Movement was like this, this group that was basically like for young kids like us to kind of like go and develop our craft a little bit. But we had to be conscious about it. Like we couldn't just say bullshit, you know what I'm saying? So they kind of like gave us the platform and gave us kind of like the boundaries to think about what we say before we say it, you know? And um, 
PT is the leader of Center of Life, Pastor Tim Smith. That's why we call him PT, Pastor Tim. So um, he had this thing where he would always, after every show that we had, so we would have like, you know, concerts all throughout Pittsburgh and shit like that. And after every show, when we asked him, hey, PT, how did the show go? He said, this was great. But remember, your next thing's your best thing. You know what I'm saying? He will always yeah. say that. So it's like that also fueled NLS because it was like, all right, this is cool. This is great. But we really got to be on that next level shit. You know what I'm saying? The next thing has to be the best thing. Has to be better than what we did before. And then it evolved into never lose sight because you got to, in order to reach the next level, you have to never lose sight that it's a, that it is there. And you have to never lose sight of the fact that you are able to get there. You know what I'm saying? Like you are capable. You have what you need to reach the next level. It's just about doing it, you know? And um, it, it was, it was a, it was our lifestyle in high school. It wasn't in my name at all. In high school, I wasn't like, I didn't really have a name yet. I was still trying to figure out what my rap name was going to be. And I'm like, I, I was funneling through a couple of names. There was a misfit because I felt like a misfit. I felt like I didn't fit in. I was like, ah, trash that. Um, then I, I noticed that I was a really angry kid, a really troubled teen, you know? Yeah. And I was like, hmm, what if I went with trouble? Yeah. But then me being the realistic person I've always been was like, you're not always going to be troubled. Like you're forgetting, like you're a teenager, you're going to be 30 one day. And you, are you really going to bank off of being troubled your <laughs> whole life? <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. So I was like, nah, I don't think I want to be troubled my whole life. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, let me think, let me think. And I, then that's when I came across treble because I was learning about music. And um, I was in a couple of music classes in high school and you had the treble clef and then you had the bass clef. And I'm like, I fuck with treble because <laughs> treble, treble kind of sounds like trouble. And it's like, I don't want to be troubled my whole life, but I wouldn't mind being treble because that's music. I, I plan on doing this for the rest of my life, you know? So um, I was like, all right, I like treble. I'm like, let's see how it sticks. And I added the NLS on it because Ron was NLS Ron. So I'm like, if he got the NLS in his name, yeah, I got to put it in mind. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And plus, yeah. I also had to put it in mind because at the time, SoundCloud wasn't accepting names that had already been used. So I had to think of something other than treble. I'm like, oh, I just wanted to be treble. I just wanted to be you know, just trouble. But I was like, all right, if I got to add anything to this shit, I'd add NLS. You know what I'm saying? So that's how Trouble NLS came to be. And now, after years of rapping, practice shows throughout the city, because I perform a lot in Pittsburgh. Like, I'm not famous, but in Pittsburgh, people know Trouble. You know what I'm saying? Because every time I show up, I show out. I make that the goal, because NLS kind of gives me no other choice. You know, if I'm going to have NLS on my name, everything I have to do, everything I do has to be the next level. It has to be something memorable, something that people can look at and buy. Oh, this guy's serious about what he does and he knows what he's doing. You know what I'm saying? So it's like I perform throughout the city, gave myself a little bit of a name, gave myself a little bit of a buzz, made, you know, certain connections. I might connect it with different theaters throughout the city. So now I'm trying to like really... I'm trying to build this slowly because at first I was kind of trying to rush it. I kept dropping stuff on SoundCloud, just like, hey, hey, guys, listen to me, listen to me. I didn't really have a plan, you know what I'm saying? But now I'm trying to, like, actually go about it consciously. Yeah. You know, I'm trying to be a conscious creator, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I feel you, man. Um, I I definitely used to go about things the same way, but yeah, trying to be a little bit more strategic nowadays as well. Um, and I love that influence that like that community organization had on on steering you in the in the direction with NLS as well, man. That's really really beautiful that there's organizations like that, just like putting people on the right track. 
it's honestly a privilege when I think about it, you know what I'm saying? Because, yeah. like, not a lot of kids had the opportunities that we had as kids, you know what I'm saying? Like, me, NLS Ron, and a, a number of people. Like, so many people came up through Crunk in, in Pittsburgh. And so many people are still coming up through Crunk in Pittsburgh, you know what I'm saying? Like, Crunk has really been, like, the incubator of young talent in the city. And it's like, I'm so grateful that Pittsburgh has organizations like that because it's like, without an organization like that, Treble wouldn't be who Treble is. I would have been rapping, but I wouldn't have been like conscious about it because before Crunk, I had gun bars. Yeah. Big gun bars. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I, was, I was troubled for real. Like, I was rapping about some shit that like, I had seen shit that I had done because like, I grew up in Homewood, which like, if anyone's from Pittsburgh that's watching this, like they know who Homewood is, but for anyone not watching, like anyone not from Pittsburgh watching this, Homewood is a place that's like, Homewood to Pittsburgh would be what Chicago is to Illinois. You know what I'm saying? If I had to compare anything, like Homewood was like rough, especially when I was growing up, I caught like the tail end of it. Cause like, when I was growing up, it was like kind of like in retrospect, the end of the Crip era, you know what I'm saying? But it was still active. People were still active. I was Cripping. My homies was Cripping. You know what I'm saying? We was all in it. And Homewood was definitely like a Crip hood. You couldn't like, you couldn't, it almost felt like you couldn't be from Homewood and not Crip. It felt like if you didn't Crip, your life was like on the line. You feel me? Especially if you're going to be repping Homewood and especially if you're going to be walking around in Homewood, like you can't be touched because people walking around on by their lonesome at a point in time were like food. You know what I'm saying? Especially youngins like me, we were young. And I'm like, whoa, like that shattered my whole sense of reality. So it's like being from where I'm from and having the opportunities that I had here in Pittsburgh, like make me really grateful because there was a point in time being from Homewood, it felt like the saying was you wouldn't make it to 18. And if you did, you definitely weren't making making it past 21. You know what I'm saying? And like, I beat the odds, I'm 24. So it's like, that's where a lot of my positivity comes from. It's like, I'm 24 now. I, I, I My mom moved us out the hood. I seen what life was like outside of the hood. And then it really like, inspired me on a different level you know like and 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 crunk kind of gave me the i want to say i'm trying to i'm trying to think of the word for it crunk gave me kind of like the foundations of hip-hop at first they were teaching crunk stood for creating realistic urban new school knowledge one of their rules was I could not be spitting those gum bars. <laughs> They're like, we're not trying, like we are, what we're trying to do with the music is make a difference in the community. And if you're rapping like that, the only difference you make is the, the only difference you're making is the amount of bodies on the ground. You know what I'm saying? And like, that was a, that was a real ass picture that I needed painted like right, right in front of my eyes. I was like, Whoa, you're right. You're right as fuck. So like, Crunk kind of gave purpose to Treble's words, you know, in a sense. So it's like, I'm forever grateful for Crunk, man. Yeah. 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 Wow. Wow. I mean, mm -hmm. breaking out of that, that sort of um, path that you had, that you saw lined out for yourself is, takes so much strength. So. Thank you. So much respect for that, man. Um, so now that, I mean, we know more about, about your past and where you came out of, what are you got, what is, um, what are you working towards right now? And also what is the, what is the crew NLS working towards as, as a collective? So where I'm at right now is getting to it. You know what I'm saying? I'm in work mode right now, you know? Right now, I'm working on a couple of projects as Treble NLS. I'm working on the music for a musical titled Milton. I'm working on, yeah, super dope. It's like how that came about is beautiful, but it'll tell its it'll tell its own story, you know. Um, I'm also working on 
I was appointed to like executive produce an album on Black Lives Matter, but that's on hold for now because I'm working on the Milton project. Um, but yeah, I'm definitely the producer for that. Um, and I'm also working on my own musical, you know what I'm saying? But like, it's in the works, it's in the works. It's probably gonna take some years cause like there's some pieces I need to put together, you know? But like, yeah, I'm trying to, I'm trying to like use hip hop in a way Cause like I love theater. Chubb One LS kind of got his training through theater. You know what I'm saying? Like I was a terrible performer before I got into theater. You know, and I I took a theater class in high school. I even did musical theater my senior year just to like challenge myself to perform outside of treble. You know what I'm saying? And and like yeah, theater theater has I have a really beautiful relationship with theater, but. That's, you know, I want to make sure I answer the question. So what NLS is doing right now is we are trying to figure out a way to integrate all of our talents into one big thing, like a business. You know what I'm saying? We want to turn it into something so that we own all of our shit. You know what I'm saying? And right now we're looking towards like maybe opening a production company because I feel like that's a wide enough umbrella for us to produce whatever we want artistically, you know? So it's like, yeah, we're just thinking, ideating, meeting, strategizing, you know what I'm saying? We're not even finished. We're just kind of like building, you know? We're just like thinking about what it will look like, what it needs to look like, what we need to do now to get it done, you know what I'm saying? And um, I'm also personally working on a brand reject you know what i'm saying the reject brand i'm just trying to like get to it like i said yeah. i'm just doing it you know what i'm saying yeah. <laughs> yeah what other um so just i i just kind of want to touch on the production company because it's just i love talking about that kind of stuff and i'm super interested what other um like skills are in the nls group so obviously you do production and mm -hmm. and songwriting and everything like that is there like videographers and and not yet not yet not yet okay. so um yeah. me and ron are rappers we're really good rappers you know what i'm saying ron is an amazing performer because of crunk you know what i'm saying like ron on stage is untouchable <laughs> you know what i'm saying yeah. ron can also freestyle like a motherfucker like i don't know how he comes up with the shit he does on the fly but like ron is a really quick thinker you know so like that's super dope um we have nlsq who is our analytical guy you know what i'm saying the money man he's the one who can sit and think about numbers but like in the long term and he can also you know put the numbers together now and um he's a very organized thinker too you know what i'm saying and very open a very open dude you know what i'm saying and he's also he also has a passion for education so he's thinking about what NLS can do in the education realm. Then you have my best friend, Keely Brady, or Kiwi Berry, that's her artist name. She is a beautiful poet, an amazing visual artist. Um, and she's also like very creative. Like the way she like connects concepts is like, like nothing I've ever seen. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, so now we're trying to figure out how to put all of our talents into NLS productions and make it like productive, you know? How do we bring all of our talents to the table? And obviously we're gonna have to collaborate with people because we don't have a videographer in NLS yet, you know what I'm saying? We don't have, um, we don't have a lot of the pieces that we would need you know what I'm saying? So it's like, and I like that. That's beautiful. I see that as opportunity because I like collaboration. You know what I'm saying? Like every chance to collaborate is a chance to connect. And every chance to connect is a chance to build more bridges, more networks. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, I think of like human connection, like the brain, the more connections you make in the brain, the sharper your, the sharper your thinking is. So it's like, if I'm making as many connections as I can from human to human, the sharper we can think as a collective. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Um, 
I would re- just off that sentence that you that you just said, I would really recommend a book called this uh, Super Connectors. I don't know if you've ever heard of it, but Never. it's it's really interesting. It's just about um, about connecting people, um, how it benefits everybody, and also just how to do it really effectively as well. Mm-hmm. It might be it might be a good read. Um, if you want to just sharpen your, your skills in, in that area, he says super connector. Yeah. I'm about to, is it by Ryan and Scott Gerber? Yeah, that sounds right. Yeah. Yellow cover. Yep. Cool. It says stop networking and start building business relationships that matter. Yeah. Oh, that's the type of time I'm <laughs> on. I like that. I like that a lot. (laughs) This is exactly where I'm at in my life right now. Cause like there is a point in time, right. As an artist, you know, I feel like we all have this moment in our lives where like someone beats into our head, network, 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 meet as many people as you can go out, pass out your business card, all of this shit. And it's like, I didn't realize how disingenuous that was until I realized I don't really know the people that I'm talking to. I don't know them at all until like some crazy story comes up a couple days later. And I'm just like, what? And like, it reminds me that these people are human. Like they're human beings. They're not just like businesses. They're not just like commodities. They are like living, feeling, breathing humans. So I'm like, wait a minute, instead of just throwing them my business card and trying to sell myself, why don't I just talk and connect with the fucking human like a human should, (laughs) you know, and like only build the connections worth having. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to just connect with just anybody. It's like if our relationship isn't worthwhile human to human, the business is just going to fall. That's not a solid foundation. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 I mean, I would say, you know, two or three great connections is better than better than 50, um, Mm -hmm. 50 mediocre ones. Real shit. Um, You're beyond NLS. You're also part of one hood media as well. Right. With, um, with Brittany Chantel as well. Uh And yeah, I'd love to hear about what your role is in one hood media and also what one hood media um, plays in the community. Bro, One Hood Media is amazing. <laughs> First off, bro, I love One Hood. Since yeah. like, since before I joined One Hood, I knew about One Hood. You know what I'm saying? One Hood has always had a presence in the community. And One Hood's mission is to build liberated communities through arts, social justice, and education. And right now we're trying to expand those you know, levels, but um, those are the three main ones that One Hood was established on. And um, so One Hood, when I got introduced to them was through an event they used to throw called One Hood, was it One Hood Day? I think it was One Hood Day. And um, it was just this big celebration at like a park somewhere or like a public location. Everyone would come through. They'd have like speakers. Like I remember the one that I went to it had David Banner. I'm like, they got David what? Banner. <laughs> one hood's the stuff for real. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Then I think the next year I seen them like at what um in Pittsburgh, we have this thing called the Arts Festival, the Three Rivers Arts Festival. And they have this stage at the point, which is like a landmark at um in our downtown area where like the three rivers connect. And um, there were like the big stage is the stage that you want to be on as an artist. I remember one day I'm in the uh, I'm at the arts festival looking at the art and I see one hood media is up on stage. I'm like, yo, like they're dope, bro. They're on the three rivers stadium, bro. It's like, what? And like, that's when like I I grew a respect for one hood. And then that's when. um, Man, I had a real rocky place in my life, but um, I recovered. I recovered. You know, I got back up. I fell. I scraped a couple knee, you know, knee skins. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but uh, I got a text from a friend named Tamia, like, "Yo, One Hood's looking for people. They're looking for um, performers." And I'm like, "Bet, send me the send me the form." She sent me a Google form. I, I fill it out. They send me an email. We're meeting on this day. We're you know excited to to see you. I come through, 
I meet the Siri X like in person, like, you know, person to person for the first time. And that's when I learned that just Siri X already knows who I am. Bro, I was like, what? <laughs> just Siri X knows who Trouble is? What? And he like, he was talking me up. He's like, bro, like you're hard. Like you're dope. I'm like, what? Just Siri X thinks I'm hard? Cause just Siri X is like a legend in Pittsburgh. You know what I'm saying? Like we, me and my homies for a long time knew who just Siri X was. And we looked up to him in a way. And it's like, it's dope to like, have looked up to him at a point and now to be working side by side with him. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like, man, that is, that's some next level shit. If I ain't ever seen it, bro, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know, like, yeah. so, um, my role. So I started as a contracted performer. That's when I told them that I was, and this was through the artifice Academy, which is, um, a program where, you know, they fund artists who use their art as activism and they fund a project for you. And they also, you know, provide you with performances, like performance opportunities, you know, opportunities to get your project out there and network and stuff like that. And um, then I told them that, you know, I was, I taught a little bit because at Center of Life, I did teach, you know what I'm saying? I was 15 years old teaching these little elementary school kids. <laughs> so I, I didn't have any classical training, but I had like field training, you know? So um, that's when they're like, hey, we have this program that we do through Schumann, which is like a juvenile detention center in Pittsburgh. And we're like, yo, like we need, they're like, we need teaching artists. And I'm like, I think I could do that. I'm from the hood. I probably came across these youngins at a point in my life. So I go in there, you know, I'm doing my teaching stuff. They're like, hmm, we like what Trouble's doing. They start throwing me more teaching opportunities. And then that's when, um, so what happened was Trouble, also worked at Starbucks at a point in time. You know what I'm saying? And um, Starbucks was eating all of my time because I had to make money. You know what I'm saying? And um, one day, just series like, yo, Trouble, what do we have to do to get you here full time at One Hood? I'm like, if I'm being honest, bro, I would need more than 15 an hour and I would need to be able to work constantly. You know what I'm saying? And you know, that's when he was like, okay, okay. We had that conversation. And then a couple months later, he, he hits me. He's like, all right, we have a job that just opened up as head teaching artist just for you. And I'm like, oh shit. And he's like, and I'll do you one better than more than 15. Have you ever had a salary? I'm like, I've never had a salary. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So um, he offered me a salary and now I'm here full time as a head teaching artist. But um. Then COVID hit and like teaching artistry got really fucking hard. Cause it's like my brand of teaching artistry is in person. You know what I'm saying? I have to connect with my students and how I build my classroom is by learning my students, learning what they want, learning what they like, and then doing that. You know what I'm saying? Cause I'm just teaching art and art is about self-expression. And it's like, how can I teach these students how to express themselves if I don't even know them, you know, or if they don't even know themselves. So it's like, we got to take some time and we have to build with each other and we have to, we got to learn not only the craft, but ourselves, you know what I'm saying? And that's hard to do through Zoom. It's really hard. It feels like there's this barrier, you know what I'm saying? And it's not the same at all, you know? And um, so now I, it forced me to think about my job here at One Hood and I'm like, Hmm. It's like if a pandemic hinders my ability to do my job, what is what is my job? And it's, what's interesting about One Hood is like they hired me as the head teaching artist. But the nature of One Hood is like if you work here, you wear multiple hats. You know what I'm saying? So it's like even though I couldn't teach, One Hood was in the streets. You know what I'm saying? Like we were at the protests. We were speak. We were like, you know what I'm saying? Speaking to power. You know what I'm saying? We were informing the people. We started up um, Ask a Black Doctor. We started up, um, what is it? A Town Hall Tuesdays, which was like just us informing the people. It turned from Town Hall Tuesdays to what Black Pittsburgh needs to know. And um, it's basically just us feeling, it started out as us people, us giving Black people 
the resources they needed to handle COVID because COVID was new to all of us. We're like, oh shit, you know what I'm saying? People, and one thing we seen was that the black community was suffering from like a lack of information. You know what I'm saying? Like it was hitting us the hardest because we didn't know any of the shit that everyone else seemed to have known. You know what I'm saying? We didn't know what PPE was or where to get it. You know what I'm saying? We didn't know why people were buying up the toilet paper. We're like, what? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's like what Black, what Black Pittsburgh needs to know was like just to inform people of like the resources there are to deal with COVID, the things you need to know about COVID, the things you need to know about keeping yourself safe. We were also everywhere was struck by George Floyd, everywhere, even Pittsburgh. And in Pittsburgh, there were protests literally every week. You know what I'm saying? They first started as just like an emotional outlet, but then they became more organized when an organization titled Black Young and Educated hit the streets. And they came through one hood. They were just a bunch of youth who were like, we're tired of the system. We want to do something. And they put together an organization that, and this was actually, this organization was actually formed in response to Antoine Rose. If no one knows who he is, he's a young black male who was shot three times in the back here in Pittsburgh by a police officer. You know what I'm saying? And um, that sparked outrage throughout Pittsburgh, like pure outrage. And youth wanted to get involved. They're like, yo, like that's one of us. Like, he was one of us and he died by the hands of a police officer. So, you know, the youth came together and they formed Black Young and Educated. And last year, Black and Young and Educated started something called Civil Saturdays. And every Saturday it was a protest. You know what I'm saying? One Hill was there to make sure things didn't like escalate. You know what I'm saying? Because like, Jasiri knows the ins and outs of how politics get, especially around protests, you know what I'm saying? So he will want to go there just to make sure that like things don't get too out of hand because he knew what could happen if no one who's seen it before was present, you know what I'm saying? And um, then one HUD started getting called on for like certain community things. Like at the start of the pandemic, we wanted to make sure people had PPE. People didn't know where to get it. So we're like, all right, one hood will give it to you. You know, we'll deliver. We were delivering it to frontline workers. You know what I'm saying? Making sure that they were straight because frontline workers were forgot about at the beginning of the pandemic. You know what I'm saying? Like, so one hood, what we do is we just meet the needs of the community. Wherever the community's at, we're like, all right, at our staff meetings, we're like, what can we do? This is what's happening in the community. Like what needs to be done? You know what I'm saying? And then we just kind of creatively think of the solution. All right, we can do this. You know what I'm saying? Because we're all like what the po politicians would call radical thinkers, but we just think outside the box. You know what I'm saying? We think in ways that are like, okay, if the system as it is now is not working, how can we creatively operate within the system that's kind of like more about justice and less about greed? you know, more about liberation and less about captivity. You feel me? And we just kind of meet the needs of the community. And right now, me being an artist, I've been meeting the needs of the community through the earwaves. So now I'm thinking about like how I can use that in one hood to kind of like restructure my job since teaching artistry isn't really possible the way I do it, you know? Wow, man, that's. I was long winded. I'm sorry, but <laughs> no, man, it's um, it's good. It's good to hear in in depth what you guys do because that is really incredible work. And um, yeah, I just really appreciate understanding um to what degree you guys are involved in the community. That's pretty incredible. Pretty incredible, man. Thank you, thank you. It, it's it's an honor to be a part of something like yeah. this. You know. Yeah. Like I was just an artist at a point in time. And now, yeah. you know, I'm an artist who has the opportunity to make real differences, yeah. you know, and yeah. it's great. It feels amazing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Speaking, speaking of your artistry, um, we want to like pull, pull back the time a little bit and talk about your album story of an American reject which you put yeah. out in, in 2018. 
And yeah, I mean, I feel like that is a very heavy um, album title. And I would love to hear what the story is behind that and the emotions that went into, um, into the creation of that album. All right. So I'm going to take it back to 2018. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) So 2018, I meet this girl. Actually, I already knew this girl, but I learned something new about this girl in 2018. And that thing that I learned was that she had a crush on me. I was like, oh, she's kind of cute. I like that. I bet. So, but the problem is, she's in a completely different country for the summer you know what i'm saying because she she has dual citizenship so she's over in france i'm here in the us i'm like all right how do we communicate how do i make meaningful communication overseas i start making songs <laughs> you know and um the first song i made was this song called signs because like it was a nod to her Instagram name. And I'm like, this is just perfect. This, and it was a play on words. It's like, it's a super creative play on words. And it's like, I don't want to give away too much because I want people to listen to the song. And I also want people to look look it up on Genius because I put the lyrics and I explained it. You feel me? So it's all out there for people to access. But um, I send it to her. She's fucking with it. I'm like, all right, cool. Then I'm like, I, I'm getting a good response from these songs. So I keep making songs, <laughs> you know, over the course of the summer, I make at least five songs. And then she comes back to the U.S. And like we have a date, you know what I'm saying? We have a couple dates. We kick it. And it, it just the vibes weren't there, <laughs> you know, like it's just there wasn't that spark. It was just uh, and one day she she texted me and she was like yeah you know i don't really think this is going to work how we thought it was going to work um i think we should really just be friends and i'm like oh, i kind of seen it coming <laughs> you know like so i'm just sitting there like as a as an artist i'm sitting there like man like, i'm i wasn't i wasn't hurt about the rejection at all cuz i like i said i seen it coming it was a mutual thing so i'm thinking like damn well, I got five songs. <laughs> like, what am I going to do with these? You know? <laughs> so I'm like, well, I did get rejected and they're all about a girl. So I'm like, I think I could do something with this artistically, you know? So I tap five more songs onto it about rejection to balance it out. Five songs about the pursuit, five songs about the rejection, which like, I didn't feel these feelings for this rejection, but I felt these feelings before. And I really sat and I analyzed it. So at this point, I'm already used to thinking about my music purposefully, right? So I'm like, okay, I'm thinking about music and the state of it at the time. In 2018, everybody was talking about how many girls they were getting. Every R&B, hip hop, you know what I'm saying? Even country, bro. Like, so it's like everybody's talking about them getting girls, but it's like, how often do they talk about the ones they don't get? You know what I'm saying? Like, they don't talk about that too often. So I'm like, you know what? This shit's real. It's real shit. And I pride myself on speaking real shit. So I'm like, I'm going to put it in the music. I'm not, you know, I'm not Sir Suave. You know what I'm saying? I'm not the smoothest dude with the ladies. I make some nice love songs, but they don't always work, as you can see, with this album. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? So it's like, you know, it's like I wanted to just bear my humanity out front and, and, like, create a project for those, you know, individuals out there who, like, don't always get the girls that they want, you know what I'm saying? To let them know it's okay, bro. Like, you're not a loser. You're not a failure. You're just a human being. And you two as human beings just don't vibe. Find someone who vibes with you, bro. You know what I'm saying? Do some self-reflection. Like, rejection isn't that bad, bro. Like, (laughs) it's normal. We all, it happens to all of us, you know? So it's like, I kind of wanted to normalize the feeling of rejection because it's like a lot of us, when we go through rejection, it's like, 
it's almost like stigmatized in a way. You know what I'm saying? Like you, you get hit with rejection and it's like, you just got shot in the chest. It's like, oh, oh no, my heart. But it's like, that's because no one's talking about it. No one's like, everyone's acting like they don't get rejected. So that like when people do get rejected, they're thinking like, oh, this doesn't happen. Jay-Z didn't get rejected. Rihanna don't get rejected, but it's like, they do. They just don't talk about it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it was like an album for those people. So yeah. we can talk about it. It's like, it happens, bro. Yeah. Embrace it. And then it turned into a line. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Which I want to speak on after, after this. Um, Dude, I love that so much because I've, um, you know, I mean, obviously when you get rejected, it's going to hurt, but there shouldn't mm -hmm. be that shame to come along with it, you know, and like feeling yeah. like you can't talk to somebody about it um, because you're right. Like it, everybody goes through it and, mm -hmm. um, and not even just in romance either, like in business, in, in business jobs, yeah, saying, jobs, schools, every, yeah. Yeah, you know, friendships. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You might not even get invited to the function. They they might be like, "Yo, bro, like, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, we're going to this party, but like, they don't want you there, bro." Yeah. It's like, oh, yeah. damn, bro. Yeah. Like, yeah, you know, it happens in yeah. so many different areas of our lives. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Even yeah. by our dog. You ever pet a dog <laughs> and it turn his head away? You're like, fuck. Like, I feel rejected, bro. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm so glad to hear that. Because, yeah, it's definitely, uh, yeah. I think Anderson Pack has a line. He's like, no one even begs anymore. Like, yeah, nobody man. begs anymore. Like, no one has I love that, that humility. Song. Yeah, yeah, like that no one has that humility, song. right? So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'm I'm glad to, that you and it's a vulnerable thing as well when you're going against the grain like that. So, salute yeah. to you for doing that, man. Thank you, appreciate that. Um, and on perfect segue, uh, on the topic of rejection, let's talk about your <laughs> clothing brand, which, um, you know, like we were just saying, reject it has some seriously negative connotations to it. Mm -hmm. And um, I think you have a really conscious message behind it and your slogan is really cool. And I'd love to just hear a little bit more about it, man. So reject as a brand, it started as a project, right? An artivist project. So um, one hood gives out these stipends for like, um, if you put in an artivist project proposal and you know it meets the requirements of an artivist project they'll give you a stipend to work on a project so they gave me a stipend to get um the reject sweatshirts i was like i want people to embrace rejection so they're like do it and i did it you know what i'm saying and then i was like so people really liked the sweatshirts. It was really only going to be a one-time thing. You know what I'm saying? But like people really liked them. Like when I sold out, people seemed to be like, kind of like, damn, like you don't plan on getting any more. I'm like, damn, like, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, should I? Like I wasn't going to, but yeah. <laughs> you know, so then I was thinking, I'm like, damn, like people really like this. I'm like, well, I'm like, why didn't I think that this would possibly have a long-term effect on people? You know, like, I'm like, why didn't I think about the future of this project? And I was like, so let me actually think about it, you know? And I was like, okay, so what can Reject be, you know, as a brand? And I'm like, hmm, because I can't make it about just talking about being a Reject, because that's not going to go too far, because at some point I'm going to get accepted. I'm no longer a reject. <laughs> you feel me? It's the same thing with this tro the trouble concept, you know? So I'm like, all right, how can I flip this? How can I flip this concept? And I was like, okay, reject that which no longer serves your highest purpose. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like, we all talk about acceptance, 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 accept your feelings, accept this, accept that. But we don't talk about the release. You know what I'm saying? When you're releasing fear, you're you then have to set up the project, the protection to reject it. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, we all know fear to be like an illusion, you know, to be like you telling yourself 
that your safety is on the line when nine times out of 10, it's not, you know? And um, so in order to, you know, create a boundary for that fear, we have to reject it with knowledge of what's actually going on, you know, reject it with some logic, you know? So it's like, now I'm like, okay, reject can be about, you know, kind of like, because what I wanted reject to be originally was like, a clothing brand that also promotes a higher vibration. I want everything that I do to promote higher vi- high vibes. You know what I'm saying? The music. I want people to hear my music and feel like they just like washed away their pain a little bit. You know, I want people to engage with my, you know, clothing brand and feel like, okay, like not only is this like, cause I don't, I don't want it to be just a take, take, take relationship between me and you know, my audience, I want it to be a give and take, you know what I'm saying? It's like, if I'm giving you this sweatshirt and I'm charging you like anywhere from 30 to $40 for it, you have to be getting something out of it other than just a cool sweatshirt. Because what is a cool sweatshirt going to do for you down the line? Nothing but collect dust in your closet, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, I want, it's like, how often do you see fashion that makes you think, you know what I'm saying? Fashion that promotes you to like work towards your higher purpose. Not too often. You're starting to see it a little bit more now, but like usually it's all about, you know, the vanity of fashion looking good, but it's not really about feeling good as well. You know, so I want people to look and feel good in reject gear. You know what I'm saying? It's like put on the reject sweatshirt because it's it's cool this shit looks nice it's mad comfy bro it's it's soft as shit but it's also <laughs> the the red one represents the root chakra so it's like reject fear and just be you get to know who you are you know what i'm saying don't be afraid of what people might think about that first figure out what you think about that shit you know what I'm saying? F- reject fear and really start to establish your foundation as a person. You know what I'm saying? Embrace your ego. You know, it's there for a reason. It can get a little out of hand, but how do you build a relationship with it to where it's actually useful to you? You know what I'm saying? Your mind is a powerful tool, terrible master. How do you make it your tool? By accepting it, rejecting the fear of it taking over and you realizing you have the control in your own hands. And then there's going to be more colors for the other chakras, but we're starting with the root, you know? Dope. Dope. Yeah. Very cool, man. Oh, I love, love everything that you're doing, man. It's so inspiring. Um, Yeah. We're, we're running a little bit long, but I want to touch on two, two last things before we, um, before we wrap it up, man. Um, I'd love to hear about your recent mentorship with future Kings mentoring and the, mm-hmm. the role you're undertaking there and, and what, what it means to you and what, what you're going to be doing. So future Kings mentorship is a panel put together for, um, black to kick off black history month, the first Friday of black history month. Right. And the topic of discussion is manhood. You know what I'm saying masculinity, you know, I don't really know the specifics. They just told me manhood and the way I think I'm like, oh, I got a lot to say about manhood. You know what I'm saying a lot of good things and a lot of bros watch out. This is toxic things, you know, because it's like manhood is one of those things that should be celebrated. You know what I'm saying that should be embraced. But manhood is also one of those things that should be accountable. You know what I'm saying? The way it shows up sometimes can be toxic. And it's like, we have to recognize where our manhood is not creating space for other identities to exist. You know what I'm saying? And we have to kind of pull back and, you know, allow space for us to express our manhood while also allowing space for other people to express their identities. You know what I'm saying? Manhood's not the, not the holy... Manhood isn't the holiest identity one can have. You know what I'm saying? Manhood isn't entitled to shit at all. (laughs) Manhood, you know what I'm saying? Like manhood is just the energy flowing through our bodies from our biological makeup. You know what I'm saying? Manhood, masculinity is kundalini energy. You know what I'm saying? It's like, well, it's, it's not, 
that it is kundalini but it root it's rooted in kundalini energy that energy flowing through your chakras constantly you know what i'm saying it's like and we all have a little bit of both and that's where you know masculinity becomes toxic because then you shun the fact that like you might have a little bit of feminine energy in you if you've come across feminine energy it will rub off on your energy and it might have made an imprint embrace that bro it doesn't make you any less manly the feminine is here to provide balance you know what i'm saying we need both you know what i'm saying some people are more feminine some people are more masculine some people are somewhere in the middle you know what i'm saying but like we have to allow people to embrace the energy that they feel within themselves because that's their energy and all we can do is express our energy while also you know making sure other people can express theirs as well you know and that's what i want to talk about i don't know what anyone else is talking about but i'm gonna be talking about that you know man and i gotta say i can feel your energy coming through the screen on this call I like that. man <laughs> I, I love your energy and it's been so dope to chat to chat with you and chop it up and hear about everything that you've done and that you're working on um i have one last question before we wrap it up i want to know what impact you want to leave in the world with your creations and with your work what impact do i want to leave on the world <clears throat> see i'm a life path number nine <laughs> so I'm, I'm the humanitarian. I feel you. I feel you feel you. So it's like, I'm, I've kind of been fated to leave an impact of balance. You know what I'm saying? I want to show the world what they're capable of, you know, cause it's like, it's not just me who has access to this source energy. It's not just you who has access to this source energy. We all have access to it the government has access to it and has been using it for years we have access to it and have been using it for years but not realizing it you know what i'm saying it's like with this source energy we can really like create the life and the world that we want to see but we just have to know what it is how it works and how it shows up within ourselves you know what i'm saying and i feel like helping people tap into that source energy is like the um first step to creating balance because the thing about source energy is if you're not accountable it can go awry really fast you know what i'm saying you have to be accountable you have to know how you show up or you're going to end up having questions as to why the world is the way it is for you because you're only seeing what the world does to you but you're not seeing what you do to the world you know what I'm saying? It's a push-pull. It's all balance. You know what I'm saying? Like, the universe is only concerned with balance. Morality is a man-made thing, but the universe is going, is going to check your energy always. You know what I'm saying? At all times. So if you don't check your energy, the universe will. You know what I'm saying? Facts. Oh, man. This was an absolute pleasure to, to chat with you, Treble. Um Thank you. It's where, been a pleasure for me too. Where can people like um, catch up f on your social medias? And is there anything you want to drop a line about that you want people to check out that kind of thing, man? Um, You can find, you can check me out at treble NLS on Twitter. Yeah. On Facebook. I'm not really active on my Facebook, but Instagram. Yes. You could definitely find me on Instagram. Um, I do have a website that is, in progress right now but just to drop it because i feel like by the time like it's going to be established at some point but it's nextlevelsite.com you know what i'm saying that's where you know you'll see you'll peep the merch um i'm still trying to figure out exactly like how when it laid out you'll see just like humans it's going to keep changing you feel me it's going to keep evolving it's going to keep growing but um that's where you can find me right now um and the line that i want to drop is just never lose sight you can do next level shit, you know yeah facts facts thank you man i appreciate your time thank and you. your answers and yeah just bringing bringing your full energy to the interview and yeah it was a pleasure of course yeah I, it was a pleasure for me too man i'm yeah. i'm glad i got to share all of that you know now i want to say thanks again to treble for taking the time doing the show with me um like I said at the beginning, he was a real 
he brought his energy and just shared so much and uh, shared so many cool ideas and also um, well we'll get into it here shortly but I just found it really inspiring listening to him talk so the three sort of takeaways that I wanted to to go over that I think is really important and really interesting and really inspiring I think the level that he's embedded into his community through One Hood Media is a really incredible thing. I didn't understand how how much One Hood does, but they sound like such an incredible organization and I know Brittany Chantel works with them as well and I just take my hats off to them for the work that they do. And then when we spoke about his album, The Story of an American Reject, and just the way that he approaches rejection in a way that is not spoken about nearly enough, in my opinion, in popular culture. Uh, you know, rejection is something that we all face, and, and uh, if you consume pop culture, you may feel like a bit of... Uh, isolation if you experience rejection and I think that someone speaking and being vulnerable about something like that can do a world of good for people who are sh feeling shame for being rejected because being rejected is painful enough as it is you don't, you don't need to have shame on top of that and the final thing just that I wanted to point out is just in his name NLS, treble NLS, um, next level shit is just always striving, always striving for the next level, uh, you know, your next thing's the best thing, I really respect that, it's easy to get complacent when you've had a small amount of success locally, or regionally, or even nationally, but um, to put your head down and keep grinding, and to keep working, and to keep Improving takes a lot of dedication, but it's the only it's the only way forward in my opinion. So that's the third takeaway from this interview. I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, I hope that you got some inspiration from it. Other than that, call it a day for the conscious creative, and we'll be back again next week. If you're enjoying these episodes, please. Follow me at MuseWorks Audio on Instagram. Subscribe on wherever you get your podcasts from so that you can stay up to date. And leave a review if you're enjoying it as well. That really helps. But other than that, I um, just want to say thanks for listening. And I hope you have a great week. And we'll be back again next week with another one. Cheers. Cheers.